Thanks for watching the screencast. The objective here is learners will be able to graph a linear function by first writing the function in slope intercept form. So in the screencast, you're going to see an alternative to graphing linear functions by finding the intercepts, 14.1. Uh, and, and this flavor of solving the problem needs a little bit of recall on your part. You need to remember that a linear function is in slope-intercept form. If it can be written as y equals m times x plus b, where m is the slope of the linear function, and the point 0 comma b is the y-intercept of the line. So what we're actually going to see is the uh, solving of the same three problems that were in the video for 14.1. You're going to see them done a different way. We're going to do these by solving for y. We're going to get y by itself. So let's work an example. And this is the same, very first same example that we worked uh, in the 14.1 video. We're going to graph 5x minus 3y equals negative 15. Now what I'm going to do here uh, reminds me a lot of a previous task we've done, where what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get just y by itself. So I want to think about uh, maybe drawing a line in here. And whatever I need to do to both sides of the equation, I'll do it, but my goal is to get y by itself. So the first thing I think I need to do is I think I need to take this uh, 5x term here, that, you know, that's not a y term, and I need to move it to this side and make it a negative 5x. Whatever on this side is positive on this side should be negative. So what I have now is negative 3y equals, and I'm going to be really particular about the order in which I put this. I can't combine these. I can't call this negative 20x. I can't call it negative 20. Uh, it's just it's just negative 5x minus 15. And since we're looking to write like something x plus something, I want to put the x term first. I want to put negative 5x minus 15. And what I need to do now is I need to divide both whole sides by negative 3 because that's what's required to get y by itself. But if I divide every term on the left side by negative 3, well, I've got to divide every term on the right side by negative 3 as well. And that's going to give me on this side, on the left side, just y. Here, negative 5 over negative 3, you know the negatives would divide out, and 5 thirds doesn't reduce. It's just 5 thirds, 5 over 3. x, and then negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. And what I have now is I have that equation in slope-intercept form. So now I can graph it by identifying the slope. Here the slope is 5 thirds. And the y-intercept is positive 5. So I can graph this like we did at the beginning of learning target 14. I can say, well, that graph's going to cross the y-axis at 5 is going to have a slope of 5 thirds. Now, there's no room on this graph to go up 5 and right 3, but I can go down 5 and left 3, and down 5 and left 3. And what I think you're going to see when we make this line is that this is the very same line we made for this problem in the video for 14.1. Let's look at another example. Let's solve the second one we did in the previous video. 2x plus 4, uh, two, excuse me, 2x plus y equals negative 4. Let's think about doing whatever it takes to get y by itself. And you know, really here, I think I can do it in only one step. If I have 2x plus y equals negative 4, I need to move the 2x to the other side and make it a negative 2x. And if I write what I have now, I just have y on the left side. And on the right side, all I've got is negative 2x minus 4. And that thing is already in slope-intercept form. y equals something x plus something. My slope is negative 2, which we might write as negative 2 divided by 1. My y-intercept is negative 4. So to make this graph, I need to cross the y-axis at negative 4. I need to have a slope of negative 2 over 1. I need from this point to go down 2 and right 1. Or 
I could go up two and left one. Up two and left one. Up two and left one. And so on. And here is, I think you would say, the same line we made for this problem in 14.1 as well. Okay, it's your turn. This is the example that you tried by yourself in 14.1. And now I want you to pause the video and try it, not by finding the intercepts, but by solving for y. Hit pause, give it a shot, and when you think you've got it, hit play. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how you did. You know, I need to get y by itself. So the first thing I need to do is I need to move the negative 4x term. And if I move a negative 4x to the other side of the equation, on this side it would be positive 4x. So what I have is I've got 3y equals 4x plus 12. Now that's still not really what I'm after. I need just y. So maybe I can divide both sides by 3. The threes here divide out, and what I get is I get y, y equals 4 divided by 3 doesn't reduce. It's just 4 thirds. x plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. There's my line equation in slope-intercept form. My slope is 4 thirds. Think of rise over run. My y-intercept is 4. So I can find the point on the y-axis at 4. I know the slope is 4 thirds. That would be up 4 and right 3. Or down 4 and left 3. Down 4 and left 3. One of the things that I want you to think about now that you've seen this same problem work two different ways is I want you to think about both of these methods being possibilities. Think of Batman and his utility belt. Think of these both being options and which tool would be the easiest for you to use or which tool is most appropriate for this problem. We'd really like to see you get good at both of these methods. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.